Hi everyone, it's Nick Goldsmith here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and this week we are talking about military sleep systems, in particular sleeping bags for bushcraft gear. Here we have laid out four different types of bag. Start off lightest and go through to most heavy duty, most reliable, bomb proof in fact. I've got a couple of different options here as well, just want to talk about in the way that we carry said types of bags because whether we like it or not, military sleeping bags tend to be slightly heavier to carry, slightly bulkier to pack away or to stow away. But there are some massive, massive benefits and I think that's what we need to focus on and that's what we need to promote and talk about here because when we talk about the price point involved and you think about a very modern high-end down bag could set you back maybe 750 pounds easily balanced against one of these particular options which will set you back marginally less than that maybe all of 100 quid and probably goes down to minus 25 when it was brand new somebody brought this up in the comments and i'm really glad they did because it's so important that we talk about that fact guys military surplus gear is surplus. Either it hasn't been issued, in which case you're onto a winner, or it's had a life and it's been used hard in the armed forces, in the outdoors, in every single weather under the sun. If it started off at minus 25, just because it's had a bit of a life, doesn't mean it's suddenly not going to cope with minus five. You know, it's still going to put you there and thereabouts easily, the sort of thing that British Isles can throw at you, and which some of which can easily be you know, minus 18 if you're not if you're not having a good day on Dartmoor. Dartmoor can get brutally cold in the winter. I can speak from personal experience. For, for the money you pay, I think it's worth carrying that extra bit of weight. Maybe make a few admissions at home, maybe cut back on the cheese, go for a bit more of a headspace walk, walk a bit further, get a bit fitter, get a bit stronger, maybe come out the shower and do a couple of squats. Just start to get your body ready for load carriage and for being able to do the mileage that you maybe want to do. Carrying a weight that is slightly more, you know, maybe a couple of kilos more than, than you would be normally happy to do so on a piece of paper. So the first bag we're gonna look at today, we're gonna to head down to the feet end because this is where they've decided to put the tab. It is by Snug Pack, okay? And this is their super lightweight jungle bag with a built-in mosquito net. Now, what's kind of cool about this is you can roll that back up into the hood when it's not in use, and it's got the dual zip on there, so you can turn it to a quilt. I have literally used it this way up. I've also slept in it that way up. This is something I would take if I was going abroad, somewhere super, super light. It packs down absolutely teeny tiny. I mean, this thing literally just scrunches down into next to nothing. Now, looking at the, the base of the, uh, the bag here, you can see there's a zip. Now I can tell you from previous uh, use, you have to be really careful with these zips. So whilst yes, Snug Pack have come up with a great idea, whilst yes, it's very useful, and I'm sure, you know, I've, I've had some great use out of it over the years, it's relatively thin walled, it's not gonna put out with a lot of cold at all, if any, but it's still better than, you know, nothing. But these zips are prone to getting snagged, caught, and uh, I've broken two of these now, I think, in the past. I first used this in Belize, to be honest, I was kind of, I just sort of turned it into a quilt and just got inside and sort of laid it over myself. I was just so hot and bothered. I didn't know what had hit me to start with. I've used it as a travel bag when I'm transiting through, when I've gone to Afghanistan a couple of times as an individual augmentee. So when I'm traveling uh, on my own through to go catch up with uh, the battle group or whoever I was working with at the time. So, so that comes in handy again. So travel bag, basically travel bag. You could probably keep one in the back of your car, so lightweight. I don't think these really break the bank. So here you have the compression sack. They've actually thought it through in terms of, you could actually put your service number and your name or maybe just your name in there so it doesn't get confused with other people's kit. And it's got these really simple little uh, pull straps on here. And then it's got this little tab, which is like an over tab that once you've managed to fight the sleeping bag back into here, top tip, remove watches. Uh, well, on the hand that's doing the stuffing, remove your watch anyway. Get, get, that, get it all into there. Put that little tab over the top, that little waterproof extra cover, okay, and then just cinch that down with uh, the little uh, bead they've provided. And then all you do is you go around working these corners up one at a time. So I will just go and do that now, and then I will show you what that looks like once it's in. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. 
Uh, I haven't even begun to pull on these tabs yet, but you can see I've stuffed it all inside there. And then as these run over, you'll see that they cross over the top of each other. This one's got slightly twisted here. Okay, there we go, that's, that's come good fairly easily. And then what I'll do is go down to these tabs, give this one a tug, and then as I, as I pull each one down, get that smaller and smaller. There we go. So in terms of a very lightweight, and I mean very lightweight, you know, that would easily go in my lightweight setup here into that Helicon bag, hybrid bag, or in my great big uh, British military 120 litre Bergen. You know, that's, there's ample space. That could even live in one of the side pouches that goes on the side of this thing. That's the kind of pros of having a stuff sack. Now, when we think about the insulative properties of a sleeping bag, putting things into compression sacks and tightening them down and cinching them down really, really tight isn't always your best friend. Appreciate if you're in a tactical situation or if you're in a situation where space is crucial, you've got to do it. If it's not so crucial, there are some other options. I also tend to use, so maybe not always go definitely for the stuff sack option. If there's an option to maybe let, let the bag, if it's a larger bag, especially you want it to loft. You want to be able to catch all that heat and you want those fibers to be free and open to catch the body's heat and hold it. So you can use something like one of these really simple stuff sacks. Okay, with just a bead on the end here, which is waterproof or something like one of these ready-made canoe style sacks with the clip on here. Okay, and you can get these in different literage and different colors. Okay, and you can get these in sort of 20, 30 liter. They're quite handy for some of your larger sort of uh, sacks. Now what we have here is we have the two part modular system, which if you think about what you're getting there, you're getting two for one isn't a bad investment either because you've got a lightweight bag that goes inside the medium weight bag to give you in effect a winter system you could then roll with the medium bag either side of winter and then roll into your light bag all through the summer i have been using the light bag which we're going to take a look at now and i've been using it inside this helicon lightweight setup that i've had all through this summer and i've really enjoyed it when we are talking about this lightweight bag what you've got here is a series of poppers along the inside, okay, with a mozzie net that's built in. Definitely a massive pro. So rather than maybe go for the jungle, the snug pack jungle option, you could take this. Though its insulative properties are better, far better than the uh, snug pack jungle bag, which might come at a bit of a cost when you're lying there sweating badly, but having that mozzie net built in the, inside the, uh, the, the hood there is, is a really good idea. Inside itself, you'll see a system, usually of colored tabs. Where are they? There you go. So you'll see these little ribbon pieces here, and that's so that you can tie this into the medium bag. The zip goes all the way right the way round to the, the far side of the foot. You can see more of these tabs here and it is very much a full-size bag. I'm going to climb in, fully dressed, right up until the last one, when I talk to you a little bit about how a sleeping bag actually works. So, stacks of hood space in here. The zip is much more robust on this one than on the jungle bag. Okay, and that hood will go fully over my head. All in all, that's a pretty good little system. Well, I think things I do for this channel. I am just under six foot and you can see I've got room. I've got room down the bottom. I am on a slope and I'm sliding down the hill slightly, but that is a really good lightweight sleeping bag. I would use this bag pretty much all through the summer here in the UK. As long as you've got a decent Gore-Tex bivy bag around the outside of it and you're on a, a, you know, a foam mat or a pad creating insulation from the floor this is a perfectly workable option. This would normally live inside a stuff sack. Same sort of sketch as the other stuff sack, just slightly larger. Okay, you can see this is the compression sack for the lightweight sleeping bag, part of the modular system. You remember guys, this is a two part system and you can see that kind of off green color compared to most other military sleeping bags, which tend to be that browner side of olive drab. Okay, so it's a nice kind of refreshing, uh, greener green. Now, this goes inside the next one we're going to look at, which is the medium. As you can see, it's very much going for that mummy style. 
where you've got this tiny little face, you can really close this thing down right around your face. And what they've done to protect the zip here is they've put Velcro over the top. Everything is just slightly upscaled, better, bigger zip. Okay, so I think this is YKK zip. It looks like it, although it's not saying YKK. And you've even got these toggles here, which you can kind of use to close down further. From where your head is, okay, this one runs centrally down, but not all the way to the feet and stops probably between the knee and the foot. And it has far greater insulative properties. Uh, when we talk about what's inside these things, I'm pretty sure these are synthetic. My experience of synthetic systems are they're overall more robust than say down, which is very expensive, or some of the um, part down options you can get where they're kind of the lower quality down bags you can get. There's also fiber pile bags, okay? So these are filled with like a synthetic filling. And generally, when you go for something like a down bag, you're talking about having to get it dry cleaned. Okay, so that's another upshot. You know, thinking about your 750 pounds and you've got to dry clean it as well. So there's dry cleaner's bill that comes with those kind of sleeping bags. Whereas these, I can attest, they get brutally thrown through the military washing machines and then they get hammered through dryers and all sorts ready for inspection the next day. Hence, they see a hard life and do a hard shift. As I open up this modular medium, we should see inside a series of colored tabs. Now these colored loops correlate to the colored pieces on the inside of the lightweight bag. So I've turned the bag inside out now and you can see um, that all the way down the side are these colored are these colored ribbons and it's as simple as just tying those in. On the inside here they have actually provided a, like a repair kit that comes inside this thing. It's like another zip slider that goes on there should you incur any damage to the zip. I think that's very thoughtful of them to leave that in there. And then it's got these really generous side bins for, for putting clothing items and things like that. I have a little system that I use. You could use these side bins for climbing into your sleeping bag with your thermals on and then taking them off and then putting those inside these pouches so that in the morning, before you break the sacred seal and let all your body heat out, you can then semi-dress yourself back into your thermals before getting back outside and facing the world. You could put your fresh socks in there, uh, ready to put on for the next day as a bit of kind of forward thinking uh, admin. There's a lot of things you can do. So it's just handy to have these little mesh pouches in here. This one here would go inside this sleeping bag and then these get tied off, which you can see the thread here is brown and the loop here is brown. So that tells me that this one goes through here and holds it into place. And it's as simple as that. All in all, what you've got here, okay, is your lightweight bag inside your medium weight bag. This now becomes your complete winter modular system all in one. And that is actually quite heavy, not gonna lie. Let's put that over to one side. That's definitely something that would end up living inside one of these giant canoe bags to allow it to loft and, and would live in a Bergen. That's never gonna go in there. However, as your singular system using either the lightweight or the medium, you could put them into compression sacks and get them into this little lightweight bag here. So that's what I meant about the whole two for one thing. And then you end up with the star of the show, the British Arctic sleeping bag. The British military have been using this bag for a very long time. The zip only goes about to about your belly button. The zip is internal. This is a very well thought through system. And what they've gone on to do is actually, they've velcroed all the inside here. Okay, it's on a YKK zip. It's fully, fully insulated, uh, lined around the hood. You've got this this Velcro liner here, which lines up. And what they've actually done is put the zip on the outside and then padded it from the inside. Which is quite revolutionary considering most of them go the other way around. It's not a mummy style bag. If we look down the bag here, you can see it doesn't tend to taper off tiny, tiny. It allows for, for instance, soldiers who are climbing into this still relatively kitted up, just placing their feet inside, their boots still inside a a plastic bag or something and then sliding that down the inside getting just enough sleep before it's classically your turn to go on sentry again 
then getting out of the bag, someone else jumping back into your bag, okay, so a technique known as hot bagging, sounds far worse than it actually is. Well, I don't know, it is a pretty unpleasant experience. It does more than outperform any bag I've ever used in terms of its ability to loft and hold heat in the way that it works. It really is a very, very good sleeping bag for the money you pay. I'm gonna jump into this bag inside the Gore-Tex Bivy bag and just talk you through the basics of some of my little bit of winter routine. As we're heading into winter, we should be thinking about what are our winter options? How are we gonna get around this? How does this work? Whether I'm sleeping on the floor, whether I'm sleeping in a hammock, it's pretty much the same sketch. I do the same thing. And it always works for me time and again. So I've got my British military Arctic bag and the Gore-Tex Bivy bag together. Depending on what I'm doing or where I'm going, I might even, if I'm going, especially if I'm sleeping on the floor a bit more and I'm not going to have the raised platform of a hammock, I will deploy or go out into the outdoors with my bag ready made up so that the sleeping bag is all ready in the Gore-Tex bivy bag and the whole system is then rolled up into a canoe stuff sack. That's one of the things I sometimes do. I tend to roll my bed out as thus and I always tend to put the hood down on that side. Now, some people like to have the hood the other way because they put it over the head. I still think there's enough room to just literally flap that over my head. I'm okay with that. I tend to have the shorter end from this side as I find it easier to get out. Now, when we start to talk about winter routine, it's gonna come to the end of the day and I'm gonna go want to get to go to bed. And I'm gonna take my boots off and they're gonna be, everything's gonna be within arm's reach. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife off. My knife's probably gonna go inside my boots, if not in into a little bag that sits just above my head. Uh, so uh, so I'm, I'm easy to, to get it and then I can roll out of bed in the morning, as you will have seen on some of our vids. Use my fire striker to light my gas burner and have my coffee while I'm still in my hammock in the morning. Lovely thing to do. Check out the video where I did a little bit of a wild camp. Chose not to have a campfire and just kind of took you through the basics of wild camping here in the UK. Generally, as I'm wearing a base layer system in the winter of thermal merino wool long sleeve, then usually pretty much a three layer, three tier, I might wear a mid layer and then I'll have a shell on the outside of me. So I'm gonna take my shell off. Um, that's gonna be scrunched up here somewhere next to my bag. And then I'm gonna have the sleeping bag laid out and the Gore-Tex bag itself. When I want to go to sleep, what I would always say is that you absolutely keep that sleeping bag, whatever sleep system you're using as your, as the inner sanctum. That needs to stay dry, it needs to stay clear of debris, mud and rubbish. So, roll up the bottom of your trouser legs which have incurred loads of rubbish and loads of mud and grass and stuff like that, if, just as you're getting into here, right, so that's already done. Okay, keep the sleeping bag closed, but now use this space between the top of the sleeping bag, okay, which is closed, you've actually got quite a lot of room, okay? Pretty much a small one man tent's worth of room to get dressed, get changed, etc., etc. do your admin. You might want to, on the outside here, you could powder your feet, change your socks, get your new socks ready, pre-powder them, put them in the little side pouches so that they're a body temperature uh, in the morning when you put them on, okay, you're not starting off with freezing cold socks. Remember, every single ounce of heat that you have to generate is costing you calories. Every single little movement is costing you calories. When you wake up in the morning, you're probably likely to have a full bladder and you're gonna need to go for a wee. Holding on to that is just costing you calories to keep trying to heat it, just get rid. But don't do it until you've got some water boiled, ready to go straight back into the system. And don't just open up your sleeping bag and let the cold air come at you uh, and, and just absolutely deplete you as your body goes into calorie burning mode massively, a bit like it's been immersed in cold water, but not quite so dramatically. So it's about incrementally putting stuff back on to get ready to then go stand by the fire, to warm up, to cook your breakfast, to put everything out, leave no trace, disappear, carry on on the trail. What I tend to do is take my trousers off, roll them up, and I might put them inside my bag, okay? And then what I'll tend to do is take my thermal trap leggings out, okay? And I'll stuff them right down into the bottom of the sleeping bag. If for some reason my 
the sleeping bag has malfunctioned or the temperature drops so significantly, significantly that I've breached the capability of my sleeping bag, I've then got some thermal long johns to pop back on, which are gonna see me through typically that three, four o'clock in the morning and get me through to maybe seven where I can actually wake up and do something about it. So that's quite handy to have them in the bottom there your spare socks, which have been changed and powdered, and the thermal layer, okay, once I'm in, and once I'm in the sleeping bag, I'll then take that layer off, and I'm gonna strip down completely. You have to get naked. So get naked in your sleeping bag means that you are allowing it the ability to, to do what it's supposed to, which is to loft all of that body heat that's coming off, and those lofting layers are gonna hold all of that, every ounce of your body heat is gonna get held, re partly reflected back at you and get held inside the sleeping bag as it does its job and very slowly, very slowly releases, uh, releases that, that temperature. If you get into a sleeping bag fully clothed, I guarantee you, you're gonna go, oh, I was really cold last night because the sleeping bag's not doing its job. The sleeping bag is gonna be freezing cold <laughs> because your clothes are holding all that heat a little bit too close to your skin. Your clothes don't have that same ability to loft all that heat inside those cells, whether it's synthetic, whether it's down, whatever it is, and all that will happen is you will sweat inside the sleeping bag and you will get cold and it's not a good thing. So get naked to make it work at its best. When you wake up in the morning, it's gonna be a similar sort of process. So you're gonna be down here like this. Initially, I tend to put my, in the winter routine, I put my thermal long johns on, then I put my trousers on, I put my thermal top on, I grab my mid layer out of my bag if I haven't used it as a pillow. Because guys, I always pretty much roll with wool. A woolen mid layer is brilliant, so I use it as my pillow. So that's, that's already nice and warm. I've got those brand new socks that are at body temperature inside the sleeping bag, they go on as well. And so now, when I'm in that layer between the sleeping bag and the Gore-Tex bivy bag, doing those final bits of admin, like putting my trousers on, I'm then ready to show myself to the world I can put my shell on, I can put my gloves on, my hat on, get as much heat saved up as possible and then begin to start my move towards getting that campfire going or whatever it is I'm doing or maybe set my gas burner next to me so I've got a hot drink. Go for that wee, release that hot liquid, put a body hot liquid back into me and begin to start my day. Now very quickly there's going to come a point where those thermal trousers, those thermal long johns are going to have to come off. It is far less of a pain to have to do it post the fact than to start off absolutely freezing cold when maybe you haven't got that instant calorie replacement going in. I don't know in your situation, I don't know whether you're traveling 20, 30 kilometers that day or whether you're gonna have a nice slow start to the day or maybe it's the end of your camping trip. It's generally seen as a bit of a no-no tactically to do that, but uh, if you're not tactical anymore, uh, you know, only fools get cold. Be comfortable, guys. So hopefully you've seen from some of the options here with the sleeping bags that uh, it really is sometimes a case of travel light, freeze at night. I tend to go for a heavy, rugged, robust, really robust option when it comes to a sleeping bag because for me personally, I feel that that is, uh, gives me that sense of, of it's, a, it's a psychological comfort as well in the back of my mind, knowing I'm gonna have a good night's sleep, knowing I'm gonna get six hours, maybe plus in the bag, for me, gives me the strength to push on when sometimes I'm pretty depleted and pretty tired. I would say prioritize your sleep, prioritize your sleep system, carry a good sleeping bag that won't fail you, wrap it in a Gore-Tex bivy bag. Some of the military options I showed you today, okay, for different applications and different job roles, all very good, all work, and all, all have served me well, and I continue to use them, okay? So there you go, the proof's in the pudding. Tilly, come, come here, come and say goodbye. Come and say goodbye. So from Tilly and I, Thank you very much for watching today. Please let us know what you thought in the comments box below. Please let me know what sleep system you're using around the globe and why. I'm really interested in this stuff and I always think it's really good when we discuss it in the comments box. There's so much to learn from it and we've got a really lovely community we're creating here. Massively thankful to everyone in Team HBB and all of you at home that are watching. Please subscribe, please share it with anyone you like uh, who, think, who you think would, uh, would enjoy this video um, and we'll see you again soon.